I'm allowed one controversial opinion per video, and today's is going to be that I don't like billboarding effects. For those of you who don't know what that is, uh, think 90s 3D computer graphics. Uh, games like Doom and Wolfenstein use them a lot. You have a sprite that is always rotated to face the camera, and you can do this to make it look like something is a 3D object when it's really just a 2D sprite. Imagine a billboard on the highway always rotating to, to face you, or at least appearing to always rotate to face you. The effect isn't as common as it used to be, but you still see it in things like Game Maker 3D games because they are a fast and inexpensive way to basically do what they were doing in the 90s, make something look like it has more depth than it really does. And I'm not really a fan of the effect. I think it doesn't look as good as people think it does, and you can do a lot better with just a small amount of more work in a lot of cases. I think people use it in situations where they probably should use something else, although that's not necessarily a fault of the effect. That's people using it for purposes where they shouldn't. That doesn't say they don't have their uses. Things like 3D particles, you usually want to rotate the face of the camera automatically. Um, if you have a diegetic UI that exists in the game world, you probably want it to automatically face the camera and not ever be at a funny angle or anything. That's neither here nor there. Today we're going to be writing a billboard shader uh, to do this effect. So I'm going to drag in a sprite. This is just going to be a tree. Let's call that SPR tree. It's a very nice tree. I found that on Open Game Art. I'll have a link in the description. And let's create an object. Um, I could continue to use my... Um, where's object? That's a note. That's not an object. I could continue to use my Pascal case naming conventions for objects, but um, I'm just probably going to start calling things OBJ billboard now just so that it's more familiar to people. So let's uh, let's drag the tree sprite onto that object. Let's give it a... Let's give it a create event and do what I usually do for 3D objects. Z equals depth, depth equals zero. Uh, let's turn off the visibility checkbox. Let's go over to the camera. At the bottom of the draw event, uh, we will say with, with OBJ billboard, we're going to manually invoke a draw event. Uh, the reason that I do this instead of just making it visible is so that I have more um, exact control over when it's drawn with things like shaders and such. And let's go into our room. Let's drag one of those into the uh, into the room. I'm just going to offset it a little bit from the edge of the room because you are going to see that it will most likely be fighting with the, um, the grass and nothing is there. Why is nothing there? It's in the room, right? And we are indeed drawing it. Let's uh, let's explicitly draw it with the good old draw self function. There we go. Now it's being drawn. So we have a tree in the room, kind of. It's flat against the ground. Uh, it is not standing upright like you would generally expect a tree to. Uh, it's certainly not automatically rotating to face the camera from wherever the camera is. And we can uh, we can make it do that. So the natural thing to want to do might be something like using the matrix functions and applying a uh, applying a rotation so that it's always pointing towards the camera. That, you can do that. That's kind of a pain in the neck, I think. Uh, there are simpler ways to do that, believe it or not, using shaders. So let's, um, I'm going to make this its own function. Let's say, let's make a function draw sprite billboard and we can um we can call that let's make up some arguments for it uh it can take the arguments sprite index image index and i'll give it an x a y and a z uh so that it oops so that it more or less mirrors the built-in So that it more or less mirrors the built-in draw sprite functions, and we can uh, we can pass it the arguments. These are all variables that the uh, that the object contains. You have a sprite index and image index, and an x and a y. And I gave it a z in the create event. And this is going to confuse people because they are very similar variable names to the to the uh, the built-in ones. I'll make it x, x, y, y, and z, z instead, like I used to. 
You're allowed to use X, Y, and Z on their own in, uh, in function arguments nowadays, but that, that still might be confusing for some people. So anyway, as I was saying, we're also going to want a shader. And if you are following this video for trying to write a billboarding shader in some other um, graphics engine other than GameMaker, you can. The shader code is very much transferable to other things. I'm going to be using GLSLES, and you can generally see what it's doing and convert that to your shader language of choice and game engine of choice. Uh, you'll just want to replace things like the game maker draw sprite function with whatever your system happens to use. Anyway, we're going to call this shader billboard. And uh, let's jump into the shader real quick. So this is going to be not quite a pass through vertex shader. So let's get rid of that. Uh, we're going to be using a position, a color and a texture. We're not going to be using a normal. When you uh, when you draw a sprite in game maker, you do not get a surface normal. And if you were to try to use one, you would get an invalid vertex uh, layout, invalid draw layout, error message in the console over and over again. So we're going to be getting rid of that. I am going to clean up this default shader a little bit because it annoys me. And you don't need to in position x, y, z. You can just use the in position as the, uh, the first argument in the vec4 function. I'll leave the point zero there just for today. Let's see, going over to the fragment shader, nothing here needs to be changed, let's ignore that. So let's talk about matrices. So this here, this GM matrices, matrix worldview projections thing, I've kind of, I've mentioned it on occasion, mostly without really describing what it does other than that it contains a matrix, which you multiply by the in position and if applicable in normal to, uh, to get the uh, final position and final normal that are used when you're drawing things. This is actually uh, the product of three different matrices multiplied together. You have the world matrix, which contains the, uh, the 3D transform. So if you were to matrix set matrix world and then something's position in space, something's position, rotation, and scale in space, that would be the world matrix. Some shader tutorials online call it the model matrix instead of the world matrix. I don't know if there's a standard thing to call it. It seems like calling it the model matrix is more common. I don't really care what you call. I'm going to go with world because that's what game maker calls it. And it's just a variable name that doesn't really mean anything special. Uh, there's also the view matrix. One of these days I will get through a video without spelling the word matrix wrong. There's the view matrix, which is the, uh, the camera. So the camera's position in space, it's to, it's from, and it's up vector. And I'm going to talk in more detail about that later. And lastly, there is the projection matrix, which is the, uh, I keep calling it in these videos the lens of the camera, so the field of view, the aspect ratio, the clipping planes. To put something in a location in 3D space, to put something in its final location, you multiply these together and then multiply them by the object space position, which is a vector 4 containing the in position, the input position, and 1. And I never thought I'd say this, but I'm getting closer and closer to wanting to just make a video on basically linear algebra slash 3D math, because I keep dancing around exactly what this is doing. But if I do end up doing that, that's another day. The primary thing that we are concerned with right now is the view matrix. So I've never talked about what's inside the view matrix before. Uh, it's a matrix. It is a four by four grid of numbers. What you see on the screen there is just a identity matrix, which is basically, I don't know if people will get mad at me for calling it the default matrix, but I'm going to call it the default matrix. Each of those, uh, each of those cells in the grid means something different for the world, the view and the projection matrix. The ones that we are concerned about for the view matrix are going to be the upper left three by three. So if you were to orient the camera in 3D space and cast a ray in front of it, above it at the top of the head and to the right, those rays would be represented by a vector of three components, a three dimensional vector. And those are what you see in each of the columns right here. You have the right facing vector, the up facing vector and the forward facing vector. Now, coming back over to the land of GLSLES shaders and game maker, uh, you can mess with those. Shut up phone. Now, if you were to multiply the world matrix by the view matrix, you would have the objects transform in space relative to the camera. If I recall, this is generally called I space. That itself isn't terribly important, but you can mess with matrices. They aren't constant values. You can do things to their contents on the fly in shaders. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're gonna take the world view matrix and in GLSLES, you would define a matrix variable by saying mat. Four, I believe in HLSL it would be mat four by four. 
Uh, I don't remember exactly. Let me increase the font size now that I mention it. So since we're using GLSLES, it's going to be map 4 and we'll just call it world view equals gm. To get the value of this, you could say gm matrices matrix world times gm matrices matrix view and I misspelled it again. I don't know what it is about the world the word matrix that makes me misspell it so often, but there you have it. You could do this to multiply them together, or uh, you could use the built-in matrix value of GM matrices matrix worldview, which is uh, the same the same thing, but automatically supplied to the shader. Likewise, down here, uh, GM matrices matrix worldview projection is um, all three of those matrices multiplied together are automatically provided to the shader. And to access things in a matrix, uh, you use array notation. If you're used to using GameMaker prior to about this April, and you've never seen another programming language before, you might be, phone, shut up. You might be used to seeing something like, um, oh my God. Are you done? You might be used to seeing something like worldview zero comma zero when it comes to 2D arrays. Uh, that is not how GLSLES works. That is also not how GameMaker works anymore. So you probably want to get used to this. World view square brackets zero and then another square bracket zero because in computers you don't have 2D arrays so much as you have 1D arrays of 1D arrays or occasionally other similar structures. Anyway, you can assign a value to that. So you could say world view zero zero equals zero. Uh, you could say it's anything you want. You could make it equal to one. You could put a mathematical expression in there if you want. Uh, I want that to be one. I am going to copy and paste this several more times and uh, put some values in it. And if you're familiar with identity matrices, you may see where this is going. And we are going to essentially replace the upper three by three matrix, the, the upper left minor matrix in the world view matrix with, a, uh, with basically an identity matrix, something that looks like this. And since I said before, those nine numbers in the view matrix uh, represent the axes of the camera. What we are doing here is resetting those axes. I suppose you could say we have removed all orientation information from the, uh, from the transform here. Lastly, since we want this world view matrix to actually be used, uh, now we will be, let's see, multiplying world. I have an off by one error on my, uh, my fingers on the keyboard. We will, we will be multiplying the world view matrix by the projection matrix. And then that will be multiplied by the object space position. So the object's position in the world. If we were to just say GM matrices, matrix world view projection, uh, that wouldn't actually be using the matrix that we just, that we just been messing with. And that would uh, put, everything back where I, uh, where it was originally. So in theory, this is all we need to do. Let's go back to draw sprites billboard and let's actually draw our sprite using that shader. So we can shader set shader billboard at the end, shader reset in the middle. Uh, we will just be building a matrix containing our translation. Uh, again, we don't really care about the rotation since that is going to end up being uh, replaced in the vertex shader anyway. And the translation is just going to be X, Y, and Z. Rotation is going to be 0, 0, and 0. And scaling, as usual, is going to be 1, 1, 1. Reset that when you're finished. If you've ever wanted to know exactly what matrix build identity produces, when you call it, it's just an identity matrix. It's a four by four grid of those values. Anyway, uh, we can say draw sprite or pick your own favorite sprite drawing function. You can use any one that you want. Uh, sprite sub image, and we're gonna be drawing it at zero, zero because the, um, the, the translation has already been done by matrix set. All right, so that should be all we need to do. In theory, anyway, there are a few, uh, there are a few things you will want to be aware of, such as, uh, the sprite not drawing. That's a big thing that you might want to be aware of. Uh, is the uh, 
OBJ billboard is indeed calling the right function and it is being drawn down there and it's giving it the right values, X, Y, Z. All that looks correct. So I probably made a, a typo in, in the shader somewhere. Okay, uh, this is going to be, I put this in the wrong order because when it comes to multiplying matrices, order does matter. Uh, let's multiply the projection matrix by world view times object space position. So we're going to be, I need a multiplication there. We're going to be applying this first. So we're going to be um, taking the world view matrix and multiplying the object space position to it, multiplying the vertex position, and then uh, applying the projection matrix. And that will correctly take into account things like the, uh, the aspect ratio of the screen and what have you. Okay, so this is a tree, this is upside down. But you can see it is indeed rotating to face the camera. Uh, no matter where I stand, you see the tree and it looks exactly the same because I am, um, because it's, uh, like I said, it's orientation information has been completely erased. Uh, so all that's left is its position in the, uh, in the screen. So to make a long story short, and I don't think this is a rant I want to go on today, but there are, um, I really don't like the view matrix sometimes. As cool as I made it sound, it really gets on my nerves. Uh, there are different ways to interpret the definition of up in computer graphics. You can use any axis you want. I have been using the, uh, the z-axis as the up direction in this series. There's a reason for that. I essentially like top-down RPGs. And if you were to envision one of those in 3D space, up would be coming out of the screen in the z-axis. Uh, whereas if you were to, um, if you were to make some sort of side-scrolling game, the y-axis would be the up direction and z would be and the z-axis going into the screen would be something else. I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, OpenGL and by extension GLSLES considers the y-axis to be up instead of z. And as tends to be the case when I try to go between those, uh, the, whether it was way back in the beginning of the series when I was first setting up the 3D projection or now when I'm trying to define the up axis for a camera inside a shader, uh, things are upside down. Let's throw a negative sign in front of that negative one, in, in, in front of that 1.0. And now you see the tree is right side up, although it is also um, it is also below the floor because the sprite origin, as understood by Game Maker, is a approximately where that where that little dot on the screen is. The dot is the tree's location in the room editor, and it's also the origin of the sprite. So while we're on the subject, let's just go and um, middle center. No, let's hit the sprite's origin to bottom center and hit the uh, hit the little lock button there. And that's just going to affect where uh, where Game Maker places the sprite. Okay, now you can see it's also rotating around its center instead of its uh, instead of a side, as it was before. And that's more or less what we want. That is a billboarding effect. Uh, like I said, edge cases. I am, uh, I, I can't say that looks correct. There's more that we can do. I should probably leave a comment here. I'm going to leave a comment there explaining why that negative one is there. I'm also going to say I've tried doing this in HLSL, the high level shader language, which is one of the other options that Game Maker gives you if you um if you right click and go to shader type. HLSL is specifically for targeting Windows devices, but its um its opinion on matrices is slightly different from GLSL's. Its understanding of the up vector is slightly different. I believe HLSL does use Z up instead of um instead of Y up as its up vector. And also it's uh, its matrices are column major instead of hey. row major, meaning that you will want to swap the, um, you will want to swap the dimensions of the matrices when you try to, uh, when you try to mess with them. Let's see, is there anything else that I want to say? Let's talk about cylindrical versus spherical billboarding. So what you're seeing here, if I'm gonna rerun the game, unclose the game, as I think I said in some previous video and someone laughed at me, um, it doesn't matter where my camera is, uh, where my camera is. I could be below the tree and it's still going to rotate to face me. I could be looking down on top of the tree and it's still going to rotate to face me. That does, in this case, not quite look correct. In some cases, that's what you want. Um, if you have a 3D particle and you want it to appear like a perfect sphere, this is what you want. But if you have something like a tree that's ideally standing up on the ground, it's probably not what you want. There are two types of billboarding, spherical and cylindrical billboarding. And this is spherical billboarding. I think I said that at like 30 seconds ago. 
the sprite, the 3D object, whatever, will always be rotated to face the camera no matter um, no matter what its pitch value is. You can imagine the camera sitting in the middle of a sphere and the um, phone, my god. The sprite would be rotating around the camera as if it was uh, as if it was on a sphere. And cylindrical billboarding does not take the pitch into account. For cylindrical billboarding, you can imagine a um, the sprite instead rotating around a cylinder. So it won't be able to rotate around any axis. The vertical axis will be ignored. And once again, in theory, all you need to do is comment out the middle section here. The uh, This is going to be the up component of the view matrix, or the world view matrix anyway, which is, in our case today, almost the same thing. Uh, as you can see, this is not quite right. That's uh, that's not standing straight up. And that is, once again, because of the, uh, the coordinate system that we are using in GameMaker, um, I am using the Z axis as up, GLSLES wishes to use the Y axis as, as up. So to get around that, we need to, uh, we need to swap the forward and, uh, the forward and up components of this matrix. And to do that, we can simply assign the second column in the world view matrix to the first column. So we're going to be replacing the up vector with the forward vector. And then we can proceed as normal. Uh, setting the uh, setting the second column, the forward column, to the identity. So let's run the game. Okay, there we go. And once again, this is upside down. I am really getting a lot of mileage out of that goofy accordion music, aren't I? Okay, so I forgot to reintroduce the negative sign while copying and pasting when I uh, when I replaced the axis. This is what cylindrical billboarding would look like in my case. Uh, you need to swap the axis, make it negative so that it stands up properly. And now we can uh, we can run the game. And we are back. We have um we have the tree. It is rotating to face the camera, but if I if I were to look up like this, you would um it can disappear almost if you're if you're at the right angle because I think this is like 89 degrees pitch. But the tree won't appear to fall over or anything awkward like that if you uh, if you look at it from on high, and that is cylindrical billboarding. Okay. So anything else? This is my third time recording this video. Uh, the first time I accidentally forgot to turn on my microphone, so there was like 20 minutes of silent video. Uh, the second time I left out a specific part, had to re-record it, tried to Frankenstein it together in in post, and it just didn't come out very good. When I, try, when I initially sat down to do this today, my computer blue screened as soon as I hit the record button, so that was fun. And um, hopefully, finally, I've gotten through this one without any errors or any uh, computer catastrophic failures or anything of that sort. Okay, that is a comprehensive guide on, uh, on billboarding effects. Just for fun, let's throw a bunch more of these into the room. Um, we, can, uh, we can create a miniature forest with some random, with some random geometric shapes and a, uh, a spotlight. I I tried to I tried to drag the font onto the um into the room and that didn't really work. Uh, let's let's see how this looks. This is gonna look cool, I think. Yeah, that's kind of nice. There are trees. There's a there's a there's a bit of an issue with when it comes to uh, alpha testing. If you've worked with 3D for long enough, you've probably seen that before. Uh, to get rid of that, we can um let's see we can discard transparent pixels. And you can do that by you can do that by using the discard keyword if a fragment's alpha is is within some threshold of of being low, and that will um oh right syntax that's got to be assigned to something, and that will ca cause transparent pixels from from being applied to the depth buffer, and now you can see uh. That tree over there is not like weirdly overlapping its neighbor. Okay, billboarding. That is an explanation of both the view matrix and the billboarding effect itself and how it works. Hopefully that made sense. I uh, There's a lot of ways of overcomplicating this if you don't know what's going on. I've seen some tutorials for billboarding shaders that use all kinds of like crazy uh, vertex attributes and corner IDs and weirdly defined vertex buffers. And that's really not necessary. All you need to do to make a billboarding effect is mess with the upper 3x3 minor in the uh, the world view matrix, and you're good to go. Uh, code, as usual, this will be in the video description. 
let me uh, let me go and commit that to source control right now. If GitHub ever opens, because it closed, because my computer blue screened. All right, here we go. Code is in the video description. Uh, if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, I have a I have a Patreon thing, so there's a link to that in the places where those go. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week, sometimes three. I've been doing three recently. This recording has been going on for far too long, and I'm going to have to sit down and edit this later today. That's going to be fun. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Posho Dev, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to say them out loud at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.